Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Colson Harris. Um, if you haven't gotten the chance to get to know me, it's kind of too late. Um, <laughs> I'm leaving for my mission in three days, and I'm not good at long-distance relationships. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm excited to speak to you today. Um, I've been preparing to serve a mission for pretty much my whole life. I'm so grateful that the opportunity has finally come. And um, I just want to share a few brief thoughts and I hope the Spirit will be able to teach you from this message. Um, I love the Savior. He came to this earth and lived a perfect life. If there's anyone we can look to, it's Jesus Christ. Um, in the Bible, there is a story of a lawyer who is conversing with Christ. He asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The Savior lays it out perfectly and clearly for us. The greatest commandment is to love him, love God and to love his children. He also tells later, There is none other commandment greater than these. In General Conference talk in October 2012, Elder Holland speculates that on Judgment Day, God may ask, Did you love me? Elder Holland says, I think you will want to know if in our special, in our very mortal, very inadequate, and sometimes childish grasp of things, did we at least understand one commandment, the first and greatest commandment of them all. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. Elder Holland continues, and if such moment we can stand around, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee, then he may remind us that the crowning characteristic of love is always loyalty. Brothers and sisters, we have a duty to bless each other and serve each other through the love that God has showed us. I hope that on my mission I can do these things for the people in Texas. I know many of you in my family and my ward are working hard to show God's love to one another through service. We cannot quit. We can use the atonement to help us when we fall and help us continue. I don't know what experiences I'll have on my mission, but I do know that I'm willing and ready to serve. I love the story of Enoch being in the presence of God in Moses 7. As Enoch is in the Lord's presence, he is being shown many wonderful and marvelous things of God's creations. I can imagine Enoch must have been very excited to see all these things. I bet it was like a child on Christmas morning going to see the presence underneath the tree. As Enoch is observing and looking about, he catches maybe with just the corner of his eye the face of God. As he is surprised at what he sees, he is surprised at what he sees, for he sees that the Lord is weeping. We read in Moses 7, 29, How is it thou can, that thou canst weep, seeing thou art holy, and from all eternity to all eternity? Enoch is shocked. Uh, I would be. Um, and he asks how this is even possible. Enoch wants to know how God could cry even after all the wonderful things he has created. God answers in verses 32 and 33. They are the workmanship of mine own hands, and unto thy brethren have I said, and also given commandment, that they should love one another, and that they should choose me, their father. But behold, they are without affection, and they hate their own blood. This is a really powerful story to me. Enoch asks God why he weeps over his creation, and God explains that man is without affection, which that means that they don't love God, and that they hate their own blood. But the story doesn't end there, luckily. Um, Enoch continues to be taught by the Lord. He begins to learn more about the character of God. In verse 41 it says, And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Enoch, and told Enoch all the doings of the children of men. Wherefore Enoch knew, and looked upon their wickedness and misery, and wept, and stretched forth his arms. And his heart swelled wide as eternity, and his bowels yearned, and all eternity shook. Enoch finally began to see the great love that God has for us, and then Enoch begins to weep because of his increased understanding of that love. As a missionary, I hope to be able to show that love to the people in Texas. I hope that I can teach them to be able to love God and to love each other. Perhaps I can be an example to them that they will be able to feel God's love through me. I hope that just as God showed Enoch the great love he has for his children, that I can show someone in Texas that God loves them. I don't know who it will be, 
but I know I was called to Texas for a reason and that there will be at least one person that needs to know how much God loves them. Uh, recently I came across the story of a missionary who was just a week uh, away from heading home. He received a letter that his companion was going to be transferred and that he would be receiving a new companion. Um, just then the phone rang and it was the mission president. On the phone it said, Elder Smart, this will be the greatest challenge. You have only one week to teach this elder the worth of souls. As a fresh out of the MTC elder got off the bus, Elder Smart noted, noticed that his new companion had a very expensive tailor-made suit with a nice leather backpack. His name was Elder Ryan. The week went by pretty uneventfully, and on the last day of Elder Smart's mission, he was washing his shirts to pack and return home. Elder Ryan noticed how stained his shirts were. He asked him, how could you have possibly gotten shirts this dirty? Why even wash them now? You should just burn them. Elder Smart said, I guess I should have gotten rid of some of these, but there are just too many memories in them. Elder Smart told him of a man downtown who bumped into him and got a smudge of ketchup on his shirt. He was so sorry that he offered to pay for the shirt, but he didn't have enough money with him at the time, so he gave him his address. Um, Elder Smart had the opportunity to teach him the gospel, and he and his wife were baptized. He then went on to tell a story of the ripped, the rip in his shirt tail from Sister Tillman's dog. He joked, we may have baptized her, but we have yet to convert the dog. After the elders finished the laundry, they headed out for a little tracting. They knocked on an old door and waited a full minute before the door opened. A small man answered, and Elder Ryan began, We are with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The little man said, Oh, please, please come in. The man's house was crowded and dusty. He poured the elders some milk with a little chocolate mixed in. Elder Smart noticed something was a little strange. He observed a little more and noticed that this man was blind. He introduced himself as Brother Clem. He had lived there for about two years, and all that time he was waiting for the elders to come by. He reached under his mattress and handed the elders three dollars. He said, I need you to take this to the bishop. It is my tithing. I cannot do it on my own. I am very blessed in my life. But unfortunately, I am too blind to know the way to the bishop. You are blessed, Elder Ryan blurted out. Of course, I have a roof over my head, a place to see, sleep, food to eat. I can get to the end of my street and back by myself. And he touched his heart and said, I have the true gospel of Jesus Christ. What more can a man like me ask for? Elder Ryan handed the man the money back and said, How about you hand this to the bishop yourself? I will see that you get a ride to church this Sunday and every Sunday after that. You do that for me? The man said. He jumped up and gave Elder Ryan a great big bear hug, at the same time sloshing chocolate milk down the back of his tailor's shirt. Elder Ryan didn't say a word, just silently hugged Brother Clem. As they were riding home, Elder Smart joked with Elder Ryan, trying to burn that shirt. Elder Ryan answered, Elder, right now, this shirt with this stain is worth more than anything else I own. I hope to wear out my shoes and my shirts on my mission. I hope to gain memories from my mission that will remind me the worth of soul. Recently, I was privileged to attend State Trek. Um, during the testimony meeting, the paw of my group shared his thoughts of the great importance of learning how to recognize how the Spirit talks to you. I will never forget that. This is so true. President Monson has taught us, usually our love will be shown in our day-to-day -day interactions with one another. He said, all important will be our ability to recognize someone's need and then to respond. I hope to be able to recognize the promptings of the Holy Ghost so that I can serve people while I'm on my mission. The poet C.R. Gibson wrote, I have wept in the night for the shortness of sight that to somebody's need may be blind, but I have never yet felt a tinge of regret for being a little too kind. I remember an experience in my life uh, one Sunday not long ago. Um, I learned the importance of asking God for service opportunities. I decided to try it, and that night I prayed and asked for an opportunity to find someone I could serve. Shortly after that prayer, I felt a prompting to just send a text to someone in my seminary class. I did it, and I shared that he was a great example to me, and that he was loved, and that I loved him. Um, 
A few weeks later in seminary, that same young met for his testimony and explained how on a partic particularly rough night, he was comforted by te the text that I was inspired to send. This is a very simple thing for me to do, yet it was just the thing that was needed for that person to feel the love of God. President Spencer W. Kimball said, God does notice us. He watches us and but he watches over us, but it is usually through another person that he meets our needs. I love that. Um, brothers and sisters, I'd like to share my testimony. I know this gospel is true. I know that Joseph Smith restored the gospel and that we can share it with other people so that they can feel the love of God. I see the same image Christ in now.